In this example, I'm going to show you a very common way of finding the molar mass of some unknown compound using the freezing point depression formula. So in this example, we're given 2 grams of an unknown compound and we're given 100 grams of some solvent, cyclohexane. Now our initial freezing point is 6 degrees Celsius, our final freezing point is 2.7 degrees Celsius. Our constant for freezing is 20 Celsius times kilograms per mole. Now, um, so we basically start with 100 grams of cyclohexane, which freezes at 6 degrees Celsius. We add 2 grams of unknown compound to our beaker of 100 grams of cyclohexane, and that solution's freezing point drops to 2.7 degrees Celsius. Now, our goal is to use the freezing point depression formula to find the molar mass. In the first step, we write our freezing depression formula. And that basically states that the change in temperature equals our constant times molality times I. I is the von Hoff factor. And in this case, it's 1 because our uh, unknown compound does not associate into anything. It stays the way it is. So, we plug in our values and we get 6 minus 20, uh, 2.7 degrees Celsius divided by 20, our constant. Celsius cancels moles goes on top and we get 0.165 moles per kilogram and this is our molality. Now in the second step let's look at the formula for molality. Molality equals moles of compound divided by kilogram of solvent. Now we're given kilogram of solvent so we know that. We also know molality. Now let's change our moles of compound formula to something else. Let's see how else can we represent the moles of compound. Now whenever you want to find the moles of compound, we basically take our amount in grams divided by the molecular weight of that same compound and we get our moles. So another way of finding or representing moles of compound is simply grams of compound divided by molecular weight. But molecular weight and molar mass mean the same thing. So we simply write molar mass. And now we have this, we have this, we have molality, and all we need is to find the molar mass. Remember, the grams of compound was given initially at 2 grams of unknown compound. And we can check using our units that this makes sense. Grams divided by grams per mole, the grams cancel, moles goes on top, and we're left with moles per kilogram. And that's exactly what molality is. Now our third step and our last step, we basically plug in our values. So for molality, which we got from the first step, is 0.165 equals 2 divided by x, our unknown, the molar mass, entire thing divided by 0.1. 0.1 comes from 100 grams. Remember, we want to deal with kilograms of our solvent, and we're given 100 grams. So divide this by 1,000, we get 0.1 kilograms. Bring this over, multiply this out, then bring it back, and we get 2 divided by 0.0165 equals x and so our x is 121.21 grams per mole and this is our molar mass.